It's amazing the impact a father can actually have upon a child. I was reading a competition, a competition called Message to My Dad, which was for primary school students, had some really interesting entries. There was a whole section which was for kids that live separate from their fathers. And a little girl named Emma in year six, she wrote, every time my dad leaves, tears come straight out of my eyes. My heart breaks and I feel like I've lost everything. Another letter from a boy named Daniel in year six also wrote, Dear Father, I don't call you Dear Dad because you have not been a dad to me, have you? I am Daniel B and I am Rebecca B's son. You may not remember my mother, but I think about you all the time. There's something about a father where a child actually finds himself constantly thinking about that father and the way that father thinks actually influences the child. By the fact that a father becomes a source of value for a child. Because a father is a sense of security for a child, they'll find themselves looking up to this father and modeling themselves after the father. It's something that's referred to as the law of worship. Psychologists refer to it as modeling, where whatever you idolize and admire, you fix your attention on, this object of your attention is something that you yourself mold into. In the Bible, it speaks about worshiping God. Why worship God? What's the purpose? I guess it's because God's characteristics are the only real thing that we can actually mold ourselves into to develop as human beings. A lot of us feel that we've been damaged by the experiences we've had with our fathers. When we've felt criticized and judged, it's affected the way we think and maybe set us up that we would then pass that on and do that to somebody else. We've got these attributes which we've been passed on seems by birth and also by experience by watching this father or it may be even the absence of a father which is the similar effect of a negative father because when you've accomplished something there was never anyone there to say hey you've done a good job and so really in your mind in the child's mind it says my, my father is absent he doesn't care about me he doesn't care enough to tell me that he loves me he's not there these thoughts actually seem to damage a child and to be able to make the child feel very underestimating of themselves. They look at a challenge and say, I could never do that. I'm not good enough to do that. These, these attributes that we seem to have received from these experiences seem to dominate us and we feel that we can't be the people that we want to be. It's a very challenging thing to say, hey, I want to be somebody different to who I am, but I just can't help it. My experiences have shaped who I am. I want to escape this, but I just simply don't know how. Who do I look to? Who do I look to? Everything I am, I've, I've taken it in. I've learned it from a child. And now I want to change, but my experiences have rooted me in who I am. I can't change. I can't stop hurting people. I can't stop being critical of myself and of others. Because who we are has been shaped off a role model that we've seen and interacted with. In order to change, in order to transform our characters, we need another reference point. And it's no wonder that God has asked us to worship Him, who is the source of all life. And 1 John chapter 4 talks about God being love, God is love. And if that's true, that's the kind of person I want to be like. I want to, I want to know how to love. I rejoice so far, you will in my Nothing can Yeah.
Now, I guess the problem here is that because of our experiences in this world, we attribute basically every negative experience we've had back to God and, and value Him from our own experiences and say, this is who you are based on, on what I've seen in this world. A lot of youth will not give God a chance at all. The whole concept of God brings up the negative experiences they've had with their fathers and so, so they just automatically say, no, not going there, I'm putting that away. We've attributed these things to God and we've, we've seen Him as really a tyrant. We have. Even little things that maybe our parents have said, even though they've loved us and cared for us, they've still been attributed to God and we've valued Him this way based on our experience. This bad, distorted image that we have of God our Father has to be changed. And this is why 2,000 years ago, God sends His Son, Jesus Christ, into this world to represent who He truly is. He sends His Son into this world to save this world, and He saves this world through reforming our image of who He is. Now we see Jesus and we watch the way He interacts. You con we constantly think that God is judging us, but now when we look at Jesus, we see something different. We see someone rather that is wanting to excuse people's flaws rather than to pick them up. I'm led to believe even when Jesus rebuked the Pharisees, He had tears in His voice. Here is, a, here is an affectionate, forgiving, caring God living among us. Watch the way He interacts. If we look to the Garden of Gethsemane, we see Jesus with His disciples, with His closest friends, and He pleads with them, please pray for me yet they fall asleep. And here's a perfect opportunity for, for Jesus to come and rebuke them openly. But yet He excuses their weakness and says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. When the mob come to arrest Jesus, straight away He says, what have you to do with my disciples? Let them go. Constantly excusing. And then we, we follow Him through up to the cross where we see the ultimate love of God revealed. You can become like Him. You can be born again. You can be re-begotten of your Father and receive His attributes. We look toward ourselves and say, look, I'm not the person that I want to be. I don't treat people the way I want to treat them. I don't see people the way I want to see them. I want to love and I want to, I want to really experience true unconditional love and acceptance. But I don't know how to do it. I've never experienced it myself. I've never had someone show me that. Now you can see that your Father, God, the one that created you, says, I love you unconditionally. I love you more than you could ever imagine. Look to my love, look to my character, and I'll teach you who to be. And this is a loving Father that says, look, I respect who you are. I, I respect who you are, and I, I think you're amazing, and I think and I'm proud of your accomplishments. I'm proud of who you've become. You can become like your Father in heaven. He can transform you into His image. Look to Jesus. See the Father. Be transformed into His likeness. That's the way you'll start to experience life. Maybe what this world is actually really crying out for is to know God, to know the Father and to know that He cares about us. And, and, and that relationship will actually change individuals' hearts. It will, it will actually change the way we think and feel and the way we interact with people. We'll mimic, we'll emulate the Father God that we serve.